anytime there's a big, I want you to come on. We're new thing called Ariel sells me on the pay-per-view. I'm in. Why you know should why? I get it? Give me, give me the top four reasons. And I don't know. Do you want to rank them from four to one or one? Let's go one to four. Give me the biggest reason I have to get this. I have to tell my wife we're not going out on Saturday night. I have to tell my son, you're fucking watching this with me. What's the number one? Why, reason? He's not into it. He's not a fan. He's for the big ones. He is. Yeah. I okay. can get him for the big ones. Well, I, I feel like he would know a lot of these names. Uh, let me just say the reason why we do this, the reason why it works, the reason why my success rate is so high is because I do believe I am the best promoter in MMA. Like I can sell these cards, but like if you had, let's say, I don't know, I'll throw a name out, uh, Dana White for a second. Uh, I, I will sell this card to you better than he can sell it to you. Like he's going to have to read off a piece of paper. I don't. I just want to let you know, like this is all off the noggin, off the dome because I I'm love mad at so Dana. Much. He's at courtside for game five of the finals of the Celtics jersey and we got our asses kicked. So he's got some, he's got to win me over after that. If you're going to, if you're going to sit, take that prime courtside seat and wear the Celtics jersey, come back with a W. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Also, you know, don't just show up in June. All right. Like, exactly. Where were you in round one? Yeah. Uh, round one. Where were you in November when they were sub 500? Okay. I mean, if Marcus Smart rang his doorbell right now and said, I've got your Uber Eats meal, would he even know who he is? <laughs> I question it. All right. Let me, let me just put it that way. Very uh, fair. Very okay. fair. Anyway, so, number anyway. one reason to get UFC 276 is? The most exciting fighter on the UFC roster is headlining the card. That's Israel, the last style bender. Adesanya, he's the middleweight champion of the world. He is incredible. He dared to be great last year when he moved up to 205. He miscalculated that move. He didn't add enough weight. He lost to Jan Bohovic. And you can say that some of the luster was taken off his, his aura, but at middleweight, at 185, he is undefeated. He is incredible. He is the second coming of Anderson Silva, if you will. He's flashy. He's a bit of a hot dogger, but he's just such a star. He oozes charisma. You know him, right? You know, yeah. Izzy, you're familiar with him. He is the headliner, and I love when they put a guy like him on this card. So this is International Fight Week. They call this International Fight Week. They do an expo. They have the Hall of Fame on Thursday night. It's the 10th annual, and usually they try to bring, you know, Connor fought Chad Mendes here a few years ago. Uh, Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen happened. The, the July 4th weekend is kind of like their culmination, right? Their Super Bowl, if you will. So they put Izzy at the top of the bill and he's fighting a guy who's lesser known. I'll give you that. But his name is Jared Cannonier. He's one of the most uh, hardest hitting uh, middleweights on the roster. He's the killer gorilla. He entered the UFC, mm. by the way, at heavyweight. Then he went down to 205. Now he's fighting at 185. He's on a bit of a run. He hits very hard. He's tough. He is not afraid of Izzy. He is not in awe of Izzy, but he has never been in this spot before. He's an underdog. He's never headlined a pay-per-view. Plus 330 on Fable. Exactly, which I think is fair. He, yeah. he has never fought for the belt before, but I do get the sense that he is not in awe of Izzy. Some of these guys, like Marvin Vittori last year, like I felt like they lost before the fight even happened. I don't think he's in awe of him. I just don't know if he's as good as Izzy. But to me, anytime Izzy fights, I don't care if he's fighting a broomstick, it's must-see TV. He is one of the best fighters on the planet. I have him number two pound for pound in the world behind Kamara Usman, the Nigerian nightmare, who's number one. Undefeated at middleweight, Israel Adesanya, he's headlining. That's your number one reason to buy this card. Now, if that- Wait, hold on. Uh, on Izzy really quick. Historically, where what are, we, what are we looking at here with him? In terms like, of all-time greats? Yeah, is he, is he tier one? Is he chance to be in tier one? Is he Mount Rushmore? Like, where is he on the list? He is on the path to being one of the best middleweights of all time, but you can't put him above Anderson Silva. Now, interestingly, he beat Anderson Silva two years ago. Uh, now, at this point, uh, three years ago, but yeah, Anderson that's, was past his prime. Yeah. He wasn't the champ, this and that. Anderson has all those title defenses, second behind uh, the great Demetrius Johnson. Like, he needs to put in a little more work. Uh, he needs to, you know, stick around a little more. But he so is, number so number two middleweight ever is in play. Yes, one hundred percent. And he needs to put in a few years before number a one. Couple middleweight. more years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A couple more years. He is he is really developing his game. He was a kickboxer. He came over to MMA. But to me, the thing about Izzy is that he has the whole package. He's a I mean, he's an incredible interview. He's very fun. He's a showman. His entrances are fun. He dances. He does all this stuff. He's a tremendous trash talker. His YouTube is incredible as well. The biggest shame is they don't necessarily let him be him. Uh, they make him wear these uniforms. We've talked about this before. Yeah. It drives me nuts. But 
he's must see TV. He's from New Zealand. He speaks his mind. Uh, I love everything about the guy. So if he, our if our listeners wanted to watch one fight that would capture him the best, that's on YouTube with him, what would you man, go with? That's a t- that's just a tough one. one. They have fifteen minutes. They they just want to watch one with him. So in September of 2020, he fought this guy named Paulo Costa in Abu Dhabi. This dude looked like, I mean, he looks like the second coming of uh, the Incredible Hulk, but also looks like a male model. Like he's just an incredibly good looking guy, but he's gigantic. Like he's muscles, he's got muscles on top of muscles. Uh, he's like, he's like a blown up version of Rick the Model Martel, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, he just doesn't come out with the arrogance. Uh, he smoked him. Like he absolutely smoked him. Uh, he, <laughs> at the end of the fight, uh, not only did he smoke him, like he like humped him. Uh, and he did it in a very sort of derogatory way. Like it was that embarrassing. He finished him as well. Uh, and it was a title fight. I would say that one also, I would say UFC 243, uh, Melbourne, Australia, October of 2019, 55,000 people in Australia rooting against him. He fought the then champion, Robert Whitaker and, uh, and smoked him and finished him in the second round. One of the greatest performances as a challenger in a title fight that I've ever seen. Oh. Probably second to Conor McGregor beating Eddie Alvarez at UFC 205 when Conor moved up to, to win the lightweight title. This was up there and uh, it was just amazing. Also, I just want to give a shout out to his fight before that one. He's fighting in Atlanta, Georgia against a guy named Kelvin Gaslam for the interim belt. And there's a great scene. They're going into the fifth round. He's all beat up. Like his face is puffy. The fight was probably tougher than he expected. And the camera catches him saying to himself, I'm ready to die. And like when you see that, when you see a guy wow. telling himself, I am ready to die, like that tells you who he is and what's in here. Just a fascinating individual. And uh, I can't say enough good things about him. Wow. So him getting the July 4th weekend spot, the main event. Huge nod. Is that symbolic or is it just a timing because other guys didn't have the fight? Like, like, or is that like intentional? This is our biggest show. This guy has to be in this spot. It's a little bit of A and a little bit of B. Obviously, Connor's not around. He's always the guy that's going to get the nod first. Yeah, he I'm was writing in this spot last year. It was, it was him versus Dustin, right? Yeah. Uh, but I would say, I mean, he is up there. He's top five biggest names in the sport. Uh, he's the one that they're putting on the ESPN banners and whatnot. So it's a little bit of timing, obviously. Uh, and there were some other names that were being discussed for this. But no, this is a no brainer. The thing is, Jared isn't the biggest name. So there's not like this heat between them, so to speak. But Izzy did say two years ago, like he thought that Jared Cannonier was a dark horse in the division and was hoping that he would be able to get to this spot. So he has a tremendous amount of respect for him. And uh, he's even been talking about submitting him, which would be crazy. I think like Izzy via submission, last I checked was like plus 2000. And he keeps talking about submitting this guy. That would be nuts. I don't know if he pulls it off. I doubt he pulls it off, but still fun nonetheless. Interesting. 